Hello friends, this is Growl. This is the first video in a two-part series where I go over how to improve your DPS as a Resto Druid in Keys. First, I want to explain the basics on cat weaving and Resto Druid DPS so that everyone is on the same page. And then in part two, I'll go over specific tips on how to increase your damage in Keys. I hope by the end of this, you'll have more confidence switching between healing and offense while still keeping everyone safe. Let's get started. I like to think of healer damage as a spectrum, with the goal being to increase your damage as much as possible without going too far off the ends. It's definitely a thing to be doing too much or too little damage as a healer, so let's talk about where I define the boundaries. First, let's go over the minimum damage threshold. This is what is expected of you in nearly every situation. I'm sure we've all ran into the occasional healer who insists, I'm not supposed to do damage, I'm a healer, and then proceeds to finish the dungeon with nearly zero damage. Yes, you are a healer and your primary job is to be keeping people alive, but your team is trying to finish the dungeon as quickly as possible, and as a healer, there's plenty of situations where little to no healing is required and you are better off doing damage. As a Resto Druid, your main goal should be to always maintain Sunfire on multi-target trash pulls, and Moonfire on bosses and priority targets. Doing this alone will net a reasonable amount of damage over the long run and will save large amounts of time in the dungeon for your team. You aren't expected to be in and out of cat form all the time, but you should still be keeping your Sunfire and Moonfire applied whenever possible. And now for the max damage threshold. To me, there's a clear line when the healer is doing too much damage and needs to take a chill pill and focus on healing. First is when DPS players are being forced to use resources or outright stop DPS while the healer is using damage globals. DPS players do much more damage than healers, so you should never be sacrificing your DPS's damage in favor of yours. An example might be a demon hunter forced to netherwalk to reduce damage, which is something that does have to happen from time to time, however should only be used for emergencies and not out of neglect. A second important red flag is when your tank either has to kite or use important defensive cooldowns that they weren't intending to use for that pull to stay alive. Again, sometimes kiting is necessary, however it is bad for DPS players who want the mobs to be grouped together for optimal cleave, so anytime it can be avoided, it should. As a healer, you want your tank to feel safe at all times, so that they can focus on maximizing everyone's damage, and not worrying about their own survival. I always recommend recording yourself and watching back to improve, and doing this is a clear way to see if you're floating too far off of one end of the spectrum. If you're noticing your Sunfire constantly dropping, or forgetting to apply it immediately on pull, it's a sign that you aren't meeting the minimum damage level. Likewise, if you're watching your tank heroic leap across the room screaming for bark while you are paws deep in some living rots, it's probably a sign that you're hurting your team, even if it is good for your overall. Now let's talk about the basic rotation. First, single target. The goal is to maintain Moonfire, Sunfire, Rake, and Rip on the target at all times. This is usually achieved by Moonfire and Sunfire while you're walking up, then switching to Cat Form and Rake and finally Rip. As a filler, you can use Shred to build up combo points. Eventually, you can apply a bigger Rip. By now, you need to switch back to Moonfire and Sunfire and maybe throw out a few heals, and then eventually you can get back into Cat Form for more Shredding. If you have more combo points without needing rip, you can use bite at 50 energy. At some point, the target is going to be low enough where it no longer is worth it to apply dots. For me, it usually ends up being around 2.5 million health, but that may change depending on the group's composition. When that happens, I usually just shred to build up combo points for the next pull, or just end it with a bite. Now for 2 or 3 targets. The rotation is similar, however two things change. The obvious one is that we now have to maintain our dots on multiple targets. The other is that it is more damage to swipe instead of shred as a filler. We're still looking to keep our dots applied and the concepts are still the same. On four or more targets however, it now gets much more simplified. We want to keep Sunfire and Moonfire up, but as a filler we simply just spam swipe. At this point, it's no longer worth it to try and juggle dots on everything as swipe will do considerable damage. 
Remember, this is with four or more even health targets. Very often, it's the case in Mythic Plus where although there are five or more mobs, one of which has significantly more health and should be focused. In these situations, I often try to maintain all my dots on the primary target, but ignore the rest of them. This is especially important on bolstering, as killing the lower health mobs earlier actually is costing your team more time than the extra damage is worth. I want to mention a few other small things. First, if you can start the fight in stealth, then your rake is empowered and does extra damage. This is preferred, however there are many situations where you simply can't do this. If you're moving quickly, your tank is likely to be pulling before you're even finished drinking, and you also may need to apply hots as the pull is being set up. On top of that, sometimes your tank is trying to move mobs and the rake stun will actually hurt you more than it'll help you. Solar Wrath wasn't mentioned in the rotation because it's worse overall than cat weaving. However, in situations where you cannot enter melee, it's a reasonable alternative. Don't force yourself into melee during dangerous situations, and don't feel too bad about just lobbing a Solar Wrath until things clear up. I also didn't mention swiping in bear form. Technically, in AoE situations where you don't have enough energy to cat swipe, it's correct to switch to bear form and swipe. However, in practice, you usually either have enough haste for energy regen, or you need to do some amount of healing in the downtime anyway. This goes over most of the basics. In the next video, I'll go over some specific gameplay tips and strategic ways that you can improve your DPS and high keys. If you like my content, I'd appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribed to my channel. I plan on making lots of Mythic Plus content for the rest of the season and continuing into Shadowlands. Happy keying!